Hi Flastube, my name is Laura and welcome to my channel Loves Rubber Stamps and Needle Crafts. Today is Tuesday, November 24th, 2020 and this is my Flastube video number 16. Before I get started with what I have for you today, I did want to take a second to just say thank you to everybody that's taken the time to subscribe to my channel. I've had quite a few new subscribers over the last couple of weeks and I just wanted to take a second to just say thank you to everybody that comes back and watches my videos, subscribes, and takes the time to leave comments. I really enjoy reading those and being able to uh, just talk to the people that have been inspired by something I've shared on my video. So it really means a lot to me. And uh, one of the commenters said that at Farm Girl had given me a shout out. So at Farm Girl, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And uh, if anybody else has found my channel through uh, somebody shouting me out, just please mention it in the comments because I would like to thank them uh, for doing that for me. So um, if you're new here, welcome to my channel. And I hope that you find something that you can be inspired by. I know I've gained, um, that's the whole reason I started doing Floss 2 videos um, is because I have been inspired by watching so many other Floss tubers out there and their projects that um, I wanted to share what I was working on and hopefully inspire others the way I've been inspired. So thank you to, again for everybody that subscribes and comes back to watch what I'm sharing. So um, I do have a lot of, well, I do have a lot of things to share today. Um, since my last video, I did share in there that uh, my mom and I were going to be going to the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat in Amana, Iowa, uh, November 5th through the 8th. So we did that and I'll share um, the things from the retreat. And then um, my husband and I actually, the day I got back from the Amana trip on the 8th, uh, mom and I had to leave really early that morning so I could get home because as soon as I got home, I was home for about a half an hour and then my husband and I had to uh, leave for Las Vegas. So we were in Las Vegas from, uh, we left here the 8th, we got there, we drove and uh, it's about a 26 hour drive. So we actually got there Monday night and uh, on the 9th and we ended up getting back home on the 18th. So um, while we were there, I did get to go to Stitcher's Paradise and I have some things to share from when I went there as well. So we'll go ahead and get started because I do have uh, quite a few things to share with you today. So, <clears throat> um, first I thought I would start with, um, the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat. Uh, like I said, it was, um, in Amana, Iowa this year, uh, for the fall retreat and it was November 5th through the 8th. Um, it was hosted by Michelle Farm Girl and uh, Michelle always does an amazing job with her retreats. Um, they're very well put together. Um, they always are a lot of fun and there isn't really any problems or hassles. You just go and have a really good time. She always does a very, I know it's a lot of work and she just does an amazing job at it. Um, because of COVID this year, um, the retreat was a lot smaller than it typically is. So we had about, I think, 32 people that were able to come. Um, it was held at the Price Creek Event Center in Amana, and the staff there was amazing. They always go above and beyond to make you feel welcome, and um, it, it was just so much fun. So Mom and I got there on Thursday. And uh, we stayed till, like I said, early Sunday morning. Uh, the designer that was there for the retreat this time was Kitten Stitcher, uh, Shakespeare's Peddler, Teresa Vinette. And Teresa did an amazing job as well. Um, she had a pop-up shop where we could do some shopping. And she put together a, a pattern and kit for us, a retreat, ex I think, retreat exclusive pattern. And um, she also had a couple of class projects that we could do on Saturday. Um, so I'll go ahead and share uh, the exclusive 
pattern and the kit that we got from there. So this was the pattern that she designed for us. It's going to glare really bad. So Let's see if I can. Yeah, my light there. That's better. This is so pretty. And if you look, there's this uh, scissor fob kit. That's like a, this was one of our, this was our class kit that we did on Saturday. And then you can make this little pin cushion. That was the other, there was that, these two projects were the projects that we could make on Saturday. So this, uh, I love this kit. It's so pretty. Uh, it's called O and it was uh, three penny rug projects. So, um, we got this really pretty box that she paper was that she put our kit stuff in. It's really nice and heavy duty. And then inside our box we had the floss in the fabric for the pattern. And then here is our kit projects. Um, I still, mom and I didn't get ours finished because we're very slow. Um, but I, we did get our, oh, it's all tangled. Hang on one second. Ah, I thought I was going to be so organized and um, I still need to trim the, let's see. My problem is I haven't trimmed mine yet, so let me kind of untangle this. Sorry. Hello, Belle. There we go. So I still need to trim the extra um, off, but it's basically like a little, mine's kind of long too. Uh, but this was the scissor fob or, that you could put on your scissors. And you made these little penny circles. They're supposed to be really rustic. So um, I actually did mine wrong because you're supposed to put another little penny on the back side. But I forgot to do that. So mine just have the one side. So we made three of those. And then you um, we got we all got this little wooden piece that has your initial on it. And then um, also a bell. So I need to trim mine off still. And then you um, put these on your scissors as a little scissor fob to find them. So that was one of our class projects. So we, mom and I did get that one finished. We just still have to trim our twine. And then we almost got our pin cushions done. So here's the little tray and I've got my flower, the top all sewn together. And then, so basically all I have left to do is to sew a blanket stitch or sew whip stitch um, the backing to this and then stuff it with some uh, fiber fill. And then you glue it into your little tray. And here's a couple little pins that you stick in the top. And then after you glue it in the tray, there's some Lady Dot Creates uh, chenille chenille trim that you glue around the edge so almost done with that we didn't quite make it on saturday so mom mom is gonna come over to my house um sometime and we're gonna finish our class projects together for a stitch night so that'll be fun so that was our kit that we got from Teresa and um our class projects that we did for the retreat. So let me see where I can set this. So uh, Teresa did a, an awesome job um, teaching the class and uh, being there. And um, also for the retreat, you could opt to participate in a smalls exchange 
um, the theme was Christmas ornaments this year. So, um, I had stitched a snow penny from Teresa Kogut as an ornament, which I had shared in my last video as my finish of it. My, I hadn't fully finished it yet, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and insert a small video of, uh, my finish of snow penny, um, fully finished into an ornament. And then I also fully finished the ornament that my mom gave away for her exchange piece. And it was, uh, the gingerbread tree from Little House Needleworks. Uh, so I'll go ahead and insert that video of the two finishes here. I wanted to quickly make a video to share my FFOs that I'm taking to the Midwest Cross Stitch Retreat for the Christmas Ornament Exchange. This is the first ornament that I made. It is from the Just Cross Stitch uh, July-August of 2010 magazine, this one. And this is Gingerbread Tree by Little House Needleworks. It's stitched on a random piece of fabric from one of those ornament packs from 123 Stitch. This is finished with a blanket stitch on wool felt. And then it has just twine for the hanger. Turned out pretty cute. I'd never done blanket stitch before, so I had to watch a video on how to do it. I don't think it turned out too bad. So this is the, ex the ornament that my mom will be giving for her exchange piece. The other one is Snow Penny from Teresa Kogut. And I stitched this on 28 count pompous and it's the crystal version that has the sparkle from picture this plus um, I just stitched the snowman from that pattern I love his little face it's so cute and then I backed this using lady dot creates velveteen and pea pod and I used Venetian red vintage seam binding ribbon and Mill Hill beads to do the sides. And then at, when I got to the top, I just uh, used the seam binding to create the ribbon or the whole, the hanger. So I love how it turned out. I think it turned out super cute. So this will be the exchange piece that I give away. Thanks for watching. And uh, the exchange piece that I received um, is absolutely gorgeous. And um, the way that the exchange pieces work is everybody just brings a wrapped gift and uh, we get numbers and when your number is drawn if you're the if you're the first person that was chosen you get to go up and obviously choose from all the gifts and um then at the the next person that goes up who has number two they could elect to either steal a gift from that somebody had received before or they can pick one off the table so um, that's Basically, everybody that comes up after the first person has the opportunity to, to steal from somebody that has already opened something, or you can get something off the table. If you uh, are stolen from, you can only be stolen from one time. So if somebody steals the thing that you have, then you could either steal somebody else's and that's yours to keep forever, or you could uh, go up and choose something off the table, an another one to open, and then whatever you open, that would be yours. Nobody could steal it. So there really wasn't a lot of stealing that happened. Um, only one person stole. So um, 
probably because pretty much everything was absolutely beautiful. So um, I did take a video of after the exchange was done, they put all the smalls from the exchange pieces on a table. So I did take a video of that so you could see all of the projects that people made. Um, but I uh, got a piece that was stitched by Sherry. I'm not going to share her last name because I don't know if she would want me to, but um, her piece was gorgeous. And the funny thing was, is Sherry and her uh, friend Susan sat at, I think her name was Susan, um, sat at our my mom and I's table. So uh, my mom and I were at the end and then um, about six feet down from our table, uh, Sherry and her friend were there. And we were the only four that sat at, at that section of table. And, um, but what was funny is I had ended up drawing Sherry's package and my mom had ended up getting Susan's package. So it was just kind of funny that mom and I both got their gifts and they just happened to be the two that sat with us at our table. So that was kind of funny. Um, but in my exchange piece that I received, I got this really pretty card from Sherry. And then she had made three uh, huge sets of floss, floss rings for Christmas or thread drops. Um, there's several. So I got three sets of the thread drops in Christmas uh, patterns. So those are really nice. And then the stitch piece that I got came in this cute little wooden box. It has a little Christmas tree cut out. And Sherry made this gorgeous strawberry. So the stitching on it is just beautiful. So I'll try to turn it really slowly. It's a little Rudolph. And the Rudolph is stitched one over one in this. So it's really tiny. But she said that this was her her very first strawberry finish. And it's absolutely perfect. I've never made a strawberry yet, but she did an amazing job. And then besides the strawberry, um, there were these three little pins. And Sherry handmade those too. So that was the small piece that I received in the exchange. So absolutely love it. It's beautiful. Um, so thank you again, Sherry. I love it. And like I said, I did take a video of all of the smalls that people had made for the exchange. So I'll go ahead and insert that video here. Yeah, there's a whole series that are um, songs. We definitely have got a few that like the tiny cats. And um, then 
at the retreat, uh, Teresa Kitten Stitcher had done a, kind of a, a game of like what's in your purse, like random things that you had. And so I actually uh, ended up winning two of the door prizes. Um, one was for having a granola bar in my purse. And <laughs> I had that, obviously, because got to have snacks. And um, then the other one that I had won was uh, if you brought your entire, if you had the entire DMC collection uh, or set of floss with you. And of course, I brought all of mine. So I had won a door prize for that. So the two door prizes that I won um, were actually two pieces of fabric. So I won this one, which is called Frozen Lavender. And these are both from XG Designs. And so it's this really pretty um, kind of pastel purple that's crystal. And this is a huge piece of fabric. This is a, it's a 36 count opal linen and it's a 38 by 27 inch. So it's actually a fat half of fabric. I was looking for my board. I don't know if this will help, but yeah, so I need to get a smaller board. This is kind of obnoxious, but. So that's really pretty. I thought that would be really pretty for um, spring or Easter designs. So I won that one. And then the second one that I won for the door price was another piece of XG design fabric. And this one is also kind of a pastel color. It's also a 36 count and it's the opal linen. And let's see. Ah on the board down um and it's a really pretty light it's called frozen lime so this uh so i can do something a little smaller here but this is a really pretty uh light kind of limey green and i really thought honestly that this would be pretty for those uh it, it, you could use it for Halloween. Like I thought some of those, uh, black monochrome, monochrome, like silhouette patterns would look really pretty on this for Halloween. So that's probably what I'll use it for. But so those are my two door prizes that I won. And I actually won a third one, um, for if you had a tattoo. Um, and, um, since I'd already won two things, I told Teresa to let somebody come up that hadn't won anything yet and choose something from the table. So those were my two door prizes that I won. Love them. Thank you, Teresa. And then, um, what else? Oh, and then I also won, uh, then they had the, the door prizes for the, the whole retreat. And I, was super lucky to win this beautiful um it's a sewing tray and this was made by sally the humble bumble stitcher her projects and her work of the things that she makes are absolutely just stunning so this is a little tray that you set down next to your where you're working and on the tray, it comes with this little, little Oort container. So you can put your Oorts in there. And these all untie, but um, this little piece here, let me untie it. The little ribbon unties. And um, there's this little charm piece. And she stitched this little spool of thread in there. It's got little charms. You can use this as like a little thread, like to hold your thread, or you can even use it as like a little scissor fob. So, um, but I think it's supposed to be a, more for like holding your threads because then you can tie it on there and it doesn't get lost. And then it also came with this little stitch dot uh, 
Needle Nanny of one of With Thy Needle and Thread. I think it's With Thy Needle and Thread. Maybe one of their designs, possibly. And then the, the little scissors, like this comes off the little button, kind of holds it. She stitched this and she even whip like does this beautiful stitching along the back or the sides and then it, hold your little scissors how cute are those little tiny things those just slide in there and they hold it's like hold your scissors you can but and she makes all of these like lines it this is padded and a uh, beautiful like felt or it feels like kind of like flannel so it would kind of it would hold your threads really well she painted the little box so i was absolutely like speechless when i won this because her her work is always absolutely beautiful but she does sell um the things that she makes uh on her website the humble bumble stitcher so check out her stuff because she makes beautiful dolls, like project um, baskets and like trays and project books. They're all amazing. So be sure to check out her website. Um, then um, another exciting uh, thing from the retreat is uh, Teresa Kogut, the designer, was also at our retreat, but she came as just a guest and um, stitched along with all of us. So that was really fun to meet Teresa and, and see the projects that she was working on. And she was sweet enough to give everybody that came a free chart um, her be thankful. So thank you, Teresa. I, I love Teresa's... Uh, Designs, obviously, because my little piece that I stitched for my exchange piece was a Teresa Kogut design, the snow penny. So that was exciting to, to meet her as well. So um, then I thought I would share um, the things that I bought from Teresa uh, Kitten Stitcher's pop-up shop. Um, the haul that I, uh, the things that I purchased from her shop there at the retreat quickly. So, um, I, I got Teresa Kogut's, uh, I think this is one of her new patterns called all the things. And then I got groovy Gary and frightened Fred from her fabulous monster series. Number two, those are hilarious. And then I had, I bought a bunch of, uh, with I needle and thread Brenda Gervais designs. I got October 31st. Her grateful, thankful, blessed. Three black eyed Susans. Gardener, good witch. Then I bought some of her newer releases. I didn't have this one yet. The Witch's Brew. I love that. I got her Hilda Boo and Some Flowers too. Harrietta and Co. I, I love this series with their little plaid, like gingham outfits. I think most all of the characters from that series have those. And then I ordered, got her new patterns, the Mr. Marshmallow. That is so cute. I might be able to use that, um, that lime fabric that I won since this is kind of on a green. That might be pretty. Uh, I got her When Santa's Away. Little new mouse design. Again, the burr, it's cold outside. Snowman. And then I ordered, I uh, bought a couple pieces of fabric from Teresa. This is a 40 count brown, can't speak today, 40 count brown sand. 
But I really liked it because it's uh, like a really pretty grayish brown. I always have a hard time finding really pretty um, gray based fabrics. They're, they're kind of hard to find good grays. So I try to snag them when I can. And this brown sand kind of has a gray, it's a grayish brown color. And I thought it was a really pretty neutral. I had bought this one because I almost thought that I have that Ann Dale uh, pattern that Shakespeare's Peddler did and it's giant. And I thought maybe this might be a good fabric for that. I'd have to buy all the floss and see, but. And then I got this 40 count fabric called My Little Dove. And again, I got this because it's more gray. This is kind of more of a cooler gray. So it's got kind of the purpley, kind of the purple tone to it, cooler gray. And then I got this one called Dirty Water. And this is a 36 count also. It's this really pretty kind of aqua color that has gray modeling. And all three of those fabrics are x design fabrics. So that was my haul from uh, Teresa's shop there at the retreat. Um, then I thought I would go ahead and um, maybe share a couple of pictures. My mom and I stayed actually at the new uh, hotel there in Amana called the Hotel Millwright. And they had just opened maybe... I think less than a month um, or even a couple of weeks when mom and I stayed there. So I, our room was giant and it was really pretty and neat how they incorporated some of the old machinery and stuff. So I thought I would insert a couple of pictures of what our hotel room looked like. And then I will insert a couple of the videos that I took of the brag table um, the brag tables there at the retreat where people could bring their finished projects in and share them. Um, I am not the world's greatest videographer. Um, when I was going along the brag table, there were a couple of projects that were bigger. So when I was filming, I ended up turning my camera because I thought, well, if I turn my camera, then the picture will just kind of turn. But you know what? It doesn't. So there's a couple parts in there where I turned my camera to fit the whole project in, but then you have to look at it this way because it's sideways. So I apologize for that, but hopefully you'll be able to uh, see the whole project, even if you have to turn your head to look at it correctly. So I'll go ahead and insert those couple of videos here.
Okay, and, um, oh, last thing from the retreat, I almost forgot. Um, our really good friend, Tina, who she's been at pretty much every retreat that we went to, um, she, um, she passed along the Glitter Village set um, from Little, or Country Cottage Needlework. She had stitched these, and she passed these along to my mom and I to stitch up since we didn't have these yet, and so... Thank you so much, Tina, for passing that series on to us. Um, this, I don't know if any, I'll flip through them really quick. This is Glitter House 6, uh, 5. There's one in here that I need to kind of cover. Let me, because it has Tina's address and I don't want to show that. Um, this one is number 7. Now, obviously, I don't have these in order. This is number four. Number three. Number two. Number one. Number eight. And number nine. So those are super cute and mom and I are super excited to stitch those. So thank you again, Tina. We love those and we'll have so much fun stitching them. So that's what I have to share with you from our retreat. Um, again, Michelle, uh, thank you so much for all your hard work for the retreat and uh, Teresa Kitten Stitcher. I know that was a ton of work putting up your shop. Uh, both ladies did amazing. Michelle did an awesome job, like I, I said, um, just, you know, um, taking into account the COVID and uh, putting it together in a way where we were still able to social distance. Uh, we wore masks um, whenever we left our stitching room, when we went down to get into the line for uh, the, the food, uh, we wore our masks and um, several people wore their masks in the stitching room. It wasn't required that we wore them in the room but whenever we left to go to the bathroom or do anything, um, then we needed to put our masks on. So um, it was a really great time and uh, just a much needed getaway with all the craziness in the world. And um, I know it was a lot of work. Again, uh, the staff and Michelle and everybody 
did it in a way that we could stay safe and still um, have a good time. So it was a lot of fun. So I can't wait till the spring retreat because mom and I are planning on going to that one. So um, so now I will go ahead and share um, the whips that I've worked on uh, since my last video. I haven't really got to do a lot of stitching at home. Um, pretty much all the stitching that I've gotten done was from what I stitched on at the retreat and then what I stitched on when we were in Las Vegas. Um, I didn't, I figured I would get a lot of stitching time in Vegas because uh, we went there because uh, my husband and I own a, a company um, called Love Tap Racing and uh, we have a race car. And the reason we went out to Vegas was because it was the duel in the desert. And uh, my husband makes tire machines for dirt track racing. And he had some machines he needed to deliver out there. And we had a, a driver um, coming in from Illinois to race our house car there in the duel of the desert. So, um, I will share a couple of pictures later on of, uh, the, just a couple of pictures of our car and, um, that, but while my husband was out at the racetrack every day, I just stayed in the hotel room in case he needed me to run credit cards or do anything like that in case, um, because he take he took a couple extra machines out in case somebody wanted to to buy them um, while they were there. So um, I ended up staying in the hotel room pretty much every day that we were there. Um, so I planned on stitching, but I ended up not getting as much st stitching done as I figured I would. I there was several days that I was just tired and I messed around on my computer, and before you know it, like you know how it is. You, you get online and it's like a vortex of your time. Like it just all of a sudden it's been four hours and all you've done is watch like weird, like dog videos or something like that. You don't even know what you did for four hours. But anyway, um, I will just share the stitching that I've gotten done since my last video. Um, this will be in no particular order. So, um, I, mostly worked on my Dark Queen of the Sea style. Um, this is done by Autumn Lane Stitchery and uh, I will insert a picture here of where I was the last time you've seen it. And um, this month I've been working on part number three that came out. Um, <laughs> And this version, um, or this month, we had an option on two versions that you could stitch. So the first version um, was, uh, well, first, let me just show you a picture of the version that I'm stitching where she's covered up. Um, so you can see the the part that we're doing to this month. It's her kind of her chest area and her two arms. So I'll insert a picture here of part three and what it should look like when it's finished. So um, the other version we got, it was kind of a choose your own adventure. So you could stitch the version that I just shared with you where her chest area, the dress comes up and it covers her her boobies. Um, so that was one version that you could stitch and that's actually the version that I'm going to stitch is her boobies covered up. And the other um, version you could stitch where her boobies are out. And when I, I'm not going to share that picture here. You, if you, if you want to see what they look like, um, just go to Instagram and, and follow the hashtag, uh, dark queen of the sea cell. Um, she's got some some big, big boobies. Like the first, when I first saw them, like I was like, holy areolas because they were huge. Um, I, you know, some people, the comments on the, 
in the, the, the Facebook group, just, I was laughing so hard that day. Just some of the comments, like this one lady had said, there was no way that she could stitch those because they made her feel extremely inadequate. And, um, you know, we just had a good time with it, but I'm going to be stitching her covered up. Um, nothing against her, her boobies, but I, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if it would probably just make people giggle if I did it here. Cause you know, we have that kind of sense of humor. So anyway, here is where I'm at on mine. So I pretty much have almost all, I pretty much have all of this arm finish. I still have to do her little spikes of, um, similar, uh, like gills or I don't know what you call it. So I got um, her dress up on one side. I still need to do up on the other side. And I've started her second arm and kind of her shoulders. So I've, I'm almost done. Um, there's a lot of stitching in these every month. Um, it takes a lot longer than you think it would. But um, my fabric is... by uh, Color Cascade Fabrics in Australia, and it's Into the Mystic. It's a 32 count uh, opal linen. So that's where I'm at currently. But this, I, I really enjoy stitching on this. So I wanna be able to stay on track with that and, um, try to get the parts completed before the next one comes out. So that's kind of in my plans, which I'll talk about those in a few minutes. Um, one of the funny things, <laughs> my mom had this funny idea that um, she, she said that when she stitches her, she is wanting to stitch one of her little boobies covered and then the other one out, like, and pretend that she had a wardrobe malfunction. So we, we giggled over that and thought that was pretty hilarious. So, um, we'll see what my mom actually stitches when she gets to that part and see if she does, does that like she said she was going to or not. <laughs> so we got some good giggles over that. And while I was working at that at the retreat, um, there were several ladies that were like, oh my gosh, I've heard of that, uh, stitch along in that, you know, and they wanted to see what the, the booby version looked like. So I had a picture of it on my phone. So they were all like, ah. <laughs> because they're just, she's very well endowed. Let's put it that way. So, um, anyway, let's move on from that. And, um, another <laughs> project that I worked on quite a bit, um, was my, uh, Hocus Pocus Mill Hill kit called Miranda. And I had taken this with me because I thought uh, Mill Hill kits might be easier to stitch on in the truck because it's very bouncy. But I never, I'm not a very good stitcher in the car. So I'm too busy looking at the scenery and doing stuff. So I never end up stitching like I think. So I pretty much just stitched on this in the hotel um, when we didn't have good lighting on you know, for a little bit at night before we went to sleep. So I forgot to take a picture of where I was the last time, but I basically had just this part and some of her face. Um, so I started on her cape and I got most of her hat. I was working on her hat and her hair and stuff. So all of that part's new. So that's where I'm at. And, um, then, um, with my rotation, let's see if I can find, I'm covering up my stuff as I go. So I apologize. With my rotation, um, on my last video, I had finished my seasonal focus whip and I actually fully finished that. So I'll show you that here in a second. Um, so then I did a round on King Coda and then I had my random draw, which was next. Well, my random draw, which I just have all my whips and opportunities for new starts in this. And the one that I drew was um, 
I'm supposed to get one of my cross stitch books and these are like my kind of those hardback books or um, the books that have the multiple designs in them. And I was supposed to do a new start. Well, the design that I had chosen that I decided I wanted to start was for my cross stitch safari book. And the one that I want to do is this leopard. So these are all done by Jane Netley Mayhew and I love her designs. The elephants that I'm stitching are in this book too. Um, but when I saw this, I always envisioned stitching this design on a fabric that looked like a sunset. I think that would just be pretty. And I didn't really have a fabric that fit that. So I ended up um, ordering some fabric from an Etsy store and it came in. But while I was waiting for it to arrive, um, I just decided to um, go ahead and um, start on my next, after my random draw will be the next two lines on my King Coda. So while I was waiting for my fabric to arrive, I just went ahead and did that. So um, I worked a little bit on King Coda for a couple of days. I, no, actually, I think I only worked on it one night. So that's what it will look like finished. I'll insert a picture of where I was last time that you saw it. And then I'll insert a picture of where I was able to get to. I didn't fully finish the next two lines. I just had one night that I got to work on it. So um, maybe about 300 stitches or so um, into the section that is up next. So I'll go ahead and insert that picture here. And um, my fabric did come in that um, I'm going to stitch my leopard on. So I haven't got to start it yet. But um, the company that I ordered from is on Etsy. And it's actually a, a company out of the U. I I think it's, yeah, the UK. And it's called Gold Leaf Needlework. And they had several um, fabric flare fabrics that are those printed ones. So the one that I got for my leopard is actually called African Sunrise. And it's a 16 count Ada. Um, but this, I think, is going to look amazing. So this is my fabric. So my leopard will I'll kind of start it down here so the majority of him will be I don't know how high he'll go up but so this bottom part will be like where the sun's hitting the horizon and then um probably but I think those colors will look so pretty with my leopard So that is perfect and really what I envisioned because I just think um, it's going to look amazing on kind of a sunset style background. So now that my fabric's here, um, when I get a stitch again, I will start my leopard on this fabric. So um, I'll go ahead and quickly show you the other two fabrics that I ordered from there because you can't ever just order one. I got one called Evening Sunset because I wasn't sure which one I would like better. Um, so that's what this one looks like. This one is it's also a fabric it's also a fabric flare Eda and this one is a 14 count. But I liked the, the African one for the leopard better. And then the other one that I 
ordered is a 16 count. Um, and this one's a bigger piece because I actually got two sections of it. So let me see if I can order, show you one section. It's actually this pretty gray and it's got, there we go. These really cool spider webs at the top and then it wraps around and comes down to the bottom. And it's called Spider Lace Gray and this one's a 16 count. So um, if you're looking for some unique fabric flare fabrics, uh, be sure to check out their store because they had several. Um, and again, it was Gold Leaf Needlework and they're on Etsy. So, yeah, over here. So, um, then the last project that I've got to work on um, is my work piece. I actually worked on this one um, at the at the retreat quite a bit, and. Um, it's my dog double shelf from Randall Sprangler by Heaven and Earth Design. And I'll insert a picture of where I was last time here. And here's where I'm at currently. So I've just been working on this page here. Let me get a different... Um, get my white one so it doesn't show through as bad. Sure. Okay, so I've just been working on um, this page here, and I've almost got part of the spine filled in, and then the rest of the page, like after I get this section, then um, you fill in like this little gold piece on this book here. And then it's just more of the spine. So that's where I've really been concentrating on um, is that area there. So those were my whips that I worked on. And um, since my last video, and I did, um, when I was finishing my two ornaments for the cross stitch retreat, I went ahead and fully finished my frosty pillow. Uh, I made it into a little pillow and this was my seasonal focus piece, uh, that I finished on my last video. So, uh, I made it into a little pillow. And this is Jolly Happy Soul by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And this is that that I stitched on that 40 count Malo that I have a hard time seeing um, the holes on this. That's why um, if anybody else liked it, I um, was going to give the rest of mine away because I was able to finish this one. And actually, I think since I got my baby bifocal glasses, um, I was able to see it a little better. But it was still kind of tough for me because it's a tighter weave 40 count. So this um, is my pillow and I backed it with um, this really pretty, it's called Mayflower Gray Velveteen. And I had bought this from uh, Kitten Stitcher, Teresa Vinette, Shakespeare's Peddler. This is from Dames of the Needle and it's called Mayflower Gray. But I wanted to kind of pull out this, the gray Color. So, but it's a velveteen. And then I did um, the ruched ribbon edge with the beads. And um, I learned how to do this uh, ruching from watching uh, Vanna the Twisted Stitcher. She has a, a video tutorial on how to do this. Um, edge for your finishes. So I really love how that turned out. So 
super cute. So that was my other fully finished object that I had. And I'm really hoping to kind of go through my box of finishes and try to get some of these uh, fully finished so I can have them out on display um, for that. So um, now let's go ahead and speaking of the Malo fabric, I'll go ahead and um, we'll find out who actually won my giveaway from last time. So uh, I made a little video. Um, I was giving away a 9 by 13 piece that I had. And then also the other half uh, from my Frosty um, design. So you'll get those two pieces. And I used the YouTube random comment picker. I had five people that say they were interested in um, trying to stitch on the Malo. And um, I'll go ahead and insert the video of me picking the winner here. Okay, we are going to do the drawing for my giveaway from my last video. I had said that I was gonna give away a piece of nine by 13. Oh, my lighting is horrible. A nine by 13 Mallow linen fabric, 40 count, and then uh, the extra piece from my frosty ornament, the other half. So I was gonna use the YouTube random uh, comment picker. So let me get the URL from my last video where the comments are. It's my channel. Copy that. We'll go to the YouTube random content, random comment picker copied and paste my URL and I had asked commenters to say the word Malo in their comment if they were interested in uh, trying to win. And there were five people that were interested in trying to stitch on the Malo fabric. So we will go ahead and pick the winner. And the winner is Strictly Stitchy. Her comment was, I really love all of your whips. You and I have very similar tastes and projects. Also, I would love to stitch on that pretty piece of Malo linen. So congratulations, Strictly Stitchy. I will put a comment on your comment to let you know that you won and um, how to get a hold of me to give me your mailing address so I can get this sent out to you. Thanks to everybody that entered and congratulations again to Strictly Stitchy. So uh, congratulations again to Strictly Stitchy. Um, I will go ahead and put a comment on yours to let you know that you won. And um, I'll put my email address. It's lovesrubberstamps at yahoo.com. And I'll put that in my video description too. Um, just send me your mailing address and I'll get that out to you um, so you can stitch on it. So I uh, thank you again to everybody that left comments and it was fun reading those. And also for the other ladies and gents that... Um, had put their name in for the drawing. So um, really appreciate that. Um, really quickly, um, the last thing I have is, I was just going to talk a little bit about my plans, which I think I pretty much already covered, which um, I want to finish my Dark Queen of the Sea um, part three before uh, December 1st, before the next one comes out. So I'll continue working on her. And then um, I'll, I'm gonna stick to my rotation. So now that my fabric has come in for my leopard, I'll go ahead and um, start that. And I try to work on um, each section for about 12 hours. So um, I'll work on him, the leopard until 
for about 12 hours worth of work. And then I want to, um, then I'll go back to my King Coda and finish up those two uh, horizontal rows in my chart. And then I'm back to my Focus Whip, which that's my Red Birds. So I know a lot of people um, really enjoy that project. So that should hopefully be coming up as coming up here in the near future. So um, those are my plans coming up. And then um, I'll go ahead and show you the rest of my uh, haul. I actually don't have as much as normal. So um, probably because I've been traveling and I quit going online ordering stuff since I knew I was going to be gone for quite a while. So I will share with you the things that I have gotten in and then um, I did order or get a couple of charts at Stitcher's Paradise. So um, one thing I wanted to share was um, on Zoo Lily, I found this metal uh, thing um, for decorating. I thought this would really look cute as a finish. Like it has enough room here that you could put something like a little cross stitch piece there and then um, one here I thought. Um, this uh, I bought it off of Sue Lily and I thought um, this would be good for like one of Priscilla and Chelsea's designs um, that have the, maybe like their December truck or something, but cute. So, and it's metal. So uh, that was one thing that I got in. And then um, I ordered these silicone ties. And there's a set of 20, and I'm sorry for the crinkle. Um, I bought these off of Amazon, and they come in little sets of, they're these little silicone stretchy ties, and they have two magnets, and these are really strong. They're hard to get apart the first time, but they just come apart. And the reason why I wanted, um, I'd seen these shared on some other floss tubes, and these are I'm going to use them for when I do my heaven and earth. Like you have this um, rolled up fabric here. Well, you can um, put, people have been using these where they put them on each side and they kind of hold your fabric, um, the, the rolls together. So, and the cool thing is then you have a needle minder that you can stick your needle on. Um, so these might be an option for people that maybe stitch in hand, some of the bigger projects where you have to roll your fabric. Um, and this you could put around your rolls to help hold them. And, um, I know a lot of people that stitch in hand don't want the heavy needle minder. So because these are magnets, they're the really strong, strong magnets. You could use them to hold your needle, like a little needle minder too. So I bought this pack. I think there's there's a set of 20 in here, and I, I think it was right around 20 bucks. So um, I haven't got to use them yet, but I'm excited to try those. So that was part of my haul. And then um, the things that I bought at Stitcher's Paradise when I was there, um, I bought one of these uh, button packs from just another button company. And when you buy some button packs, then you also, it comes with like a free chart. So this one was for, um, I'll just briefly show it. It's called Bring It On. And it's, I don't know, it's called, what is it called? Yeah, it's called Bring It On. So here's kind of, I'm going to cover the chart up because even though it's free, but you have to buy the button pack to get it. But it's basically this design of a little cute snowman that's, it's very windy. It says, bring it on. And you get the buttons. Um, I had seen this one stitched up on the wall and it was really cute. So I got that. And then I got Wendell the Warlock. From uh, this is a Mosey and Me pattern. This is an older one, and I don't know if um, I really love Mosey and Me. Um, it's a retired company, but you can still find some of their charts. Um, 
and I don't know if, it, if you knew this or not, but one of the, the couple that designs Mosey and Me, it's Frank and Judy Bilek. And Frank Bilek um, was actually on that show um, on uh, HGTV, Trading Spaces. He was one of the designers that would um, go in and uh, design homes and stuff on HGTV. I think... I think Frank passed away though, um, if I remember correctly. So, um, but he, um, uh, I love his cross stitch designs. He did some really crazy stuff, um, sometimes in his redecorating. <laughs> he was very creative, um, obviously from when you look at their designs, he was a very, very creative person. So, um, but I love this and I'd seen a model stitched up of this. It was really cute. So that was one of the charts that I bought. And then I bought um, Just Nan's Ghastly Ghostly Ghouls. And it came with uh, the coffin charm for in the, the little building. And then um, they had a, a cardstock version of Boo to You from the Prairie Schooler. I didn't have this one yet, but because I want to do a Halloween tree, I wanted to do some of these for ornaments. And you always got to get those uh, cardstock versions of those when you can find them. Um, so that was my haul from Stitcher's Paradise. I didn't get a whole lot from there, but um, then I went ahead and bought the uh, DVD from Amazon for the complete collection of the Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly. Uh, from just cross stitch. I think they're just cross, maybe not. Um, Annie's publication. Um, I was inspired to get this by Mama G. Um, she does floss tube videos, but she has been show showing several, um, projects that she has found, um, in these issues, um, that she's going to be stitching. So, um, this was, I paid $44.95, but you get 80 issues of the magazines. And I found um, several things that I would probably stitch. So worth it if you like that style. Um, and then I had placed an order with Kitten Stitcher on her website before we went to the retreat because um, she gave all the retreat attendees a coupon code that we could use. Um, I one I don't have it with me to here to show, but I had ordered a fat quarter bundle of fabric from her, um, the All Hollows Eve, uh, fat quarter bundle. So I got that fabric, and then I ordered a cross stitch chart, um, another one from Marjorie Massey or Macy, called uh, Family Prairie Home You and Me, and I really loved those birds. I just thought they were really pretty. And then I got the next uh, charts from uh, Stitching with the Housewives. I got the January truck. And I got uh, Rudolph and Mrs. Claus from their Sip of the Seasons. Look at that Rudolph and his little slippers and his jammies. And Priscilla's snowmen are so, so cute. The little reindeer snowmen. Adorable. He's got a little Santa in his cup. And then uh, the A Merry Little Christmas chart. And then their gingham greetings one and two for their ornaments. And um, I also have these that I'll be putting in my shop. Um, my online store is called Love's Rubber Stamps and Needle Crafts, just like my channel. So these will be going into my store. And then I got the new issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. This is their winter one. This, look how thick this is. It's like a book. But their magazines are probably the best magazine I've ever had. Like quality wise, nice, super thick pages. But um, this issue is amazing. So. I'm not going to go through and show you like everything in here, but 
Um, it's got Priscilla and Chelsea's design. Um, these cute little snowmen from their series they've been doing. Um, Michelle Palmer. I love her artwork. Um, I've ordered several of her designs off of um, her Etsy store. Uh, there's Punch Needle, and this is a design by Luminous Fiber Arts, uh, Misty Purcell, in this issue. And then I'll show you, the back shows some more projects. There's this really pretty cardinal, some Punch Needle snowmen, and look at this Teresa Kogut design. It's a cross stitch in here. And uh, another punch needle. And I was going to show you just a couple um, that I thought were really cute um, that aren't shown there. This is from Twin Peak, Twin Peak Primitives, the snowman. And then um, Lindy Stitches, Stephanie. Um, she did a polar bear bowed in this one. So um, I. Ha I'm going to be putting these magazines in my online store too. Um, so I should have these listed hopefully sometime this week. But look how, I mean, all of these charts, they're amazing. Um, and these are $16.99 for the special winter issues. Well worth it. Awesome quality magazine. Probably the best quality magazine I've ever had in my hands. So I'll be putting those in my store. Um, and there's 31 projects. So $17 for 31 projects um, is an amazing deal. So um, that was one of the things I got in. And then I got in my next issue of the World of Cross Stitching. I subscribed to this too. Um, there are just a couple of things in here that I really liked. This was the free gift. Um, it's really cute little birds with teacups. Uh, but I really liked this design called A Sprinkle of Magic by Hell's Couple Ditch. It's this cute little angel. And um, this design has, you add sequins and beads to it. So I'm sure it's really sparkly. But I really like how um, the little angel is... Um, really pretty and I really love the colors of this one so um but I like that um she's African-American or ethnic because you don't really it's hard to find patterns um that feature people of color um so that's that's really nice to see that um we're starting to see more of those so um, and then the other design that I really liked in here was uh, by Doreen Jones, and it's an advent calendar um, that, of a lot of her cute Christmas designs. So that was really cute. Um, or you could make them as little ornaments. Little. Um, I did want to share, um, since I just showed you that advent calendar, I had ordered this uh, quilt. It's like a quilting book. And I can't remember the store's name, but I know Fat Quarter Shop has this one. But if you look at the cover, like look at this cute advent calendar that you can make a little quilt with these little stockings. How cute would that be to do um, those little cross stitch um, motifs that I just, sh the, the little cross stitch designs from Doreen Jones for the little stockings. That would be cute. And it's called Christmas in the Country. This is a book. They're um, they have really cute snowmen. Like I am just learning how to quilt, um, so I need real basic stuff. So I don't know how basic um, these were, but I really liked this quilt that I would like to try someday. The little snowmen um, might be way over my head. I don't know. I haven't really got to look at it too much yet, but that was um, one of the reasons I got that book. So. Um, then I got um, from eBay this called Mermaid he Mermaid Heaven design. And I'm not sure who it's by. Pin, pin Stitch? It's Pin Stitch. P-I-N-N. -N. 
but I thought she was really pretty with her little mermaid baby. And then I just got, um, I think it was yesterday, my October uh, threads of the month from Color & Cotton. So there's Cranberry, Aztec, Lemongrass, a Dusty Blue, and Witch's Brew. So those are really pretty. <laughs> And I also got my October uh, fabric of the month from her. Um, this is a Harbor Gray in a Lugana 32 count. Really pretty gray color. This is a really good color gray. Doesn't have a lot of modeling, but it's a really pretty, like I said, I have a hard time finding the really nice grays. And so that's one of them that's nice, so. And then the other piece I got was um, called Corn Husk, and it's a 32 count Belfast. And again, this is a real nice neutral color, kind of a goldish, um, goldish color, goldish yellow, Corn Husk, looks like Corn Husk. And um, then I finally got in um, those charts that I had ordered from Crazy Annie's back from her Christmas in July sale. Um, I finally got those in. So um, I'd ordered these back in July and they just came in. So um, this is the Teresa Kogut's uh, Frosty's Gifts. I got a Cozy Christmas Cat from the Blue Flower. And this was designed for Crazy Annie for her Christmas in July sale. So she might still have some available. Um, I'm not sure. Um, this was another exclusive chart for Crazy Annie from Cottage Garden called F Snow Much Love. And this came with buttons to, for the... And then Luminous Fiber Arts, I got her fleece Navidad. And then I got my uh, fabric of the month from uh, Under the Sea Fabrics, and this is a beautiful gray too. So rolling in the grays, which is awesome. This is called Spellbound, and I get a 32 count Belfast linen uh, fat quarter. So really pretty gray. So at the end of the year, um, Leslie always does um, where you can vote on your favorite colors for um, from her fabric of the month for the year. And then usually she'll add um, a couple to her main design or her main color range. So I'm really hoping that um, that becomes one of them because this is another really good gray color. And um, then I had another eBay purchase of a couple of Halloween charts. This is another Mosey and Me one um, called Bosco Booberry. And then I got from the same seller, she had a uh, Waxing Moon Designs, The Witch's Garden. And um, then my last thing that I need to share, um, I when I was at Stitcher's Paradise, uh, they had these really cute, um, they were finished as cubes and they were uh, from Bent Creek and they were the, their different um, sheep. And the one that was in the middle that just, I thought it was so stinking cute that I needed to find it um, was one called Boo Betty. And of course, uh, Stitcher's Paradise was out of the chart. So I went on the hunt when I got back to my hotel room um, to find it and I found it at a company called Ye Old Cross Stitchery out of Bristol, Pennsylvania. And so I uh, was able to find Boo Betty there, and this is what Boo Betty looks like. So it's this cute little pumpkin on this stinking cute little sheep. 
And um, they have, there's a whole series from Bent Creek where they have different sheep for the different seasons and they're decorated all different. But she was my favorite. And, um, but they had all these in the videos that I all share. I um, was able to get a video of these finished. Um, but this is a little kit, it comes with the fabric and the floss. So I found that at Ye Old Stitchery online. So then of course I had to order a couple other things. Um, they sent me a packet of, um, a, as a thank you gift, like several free freebie charts um, for ordering. So several different ones um, for a free gift. Um, so that was awesome. And it was stuck together. Then I ordered um, a couple of Just Nan uh, charts. This is called Eight Tiny Reindeer Cube. Comes with the buttons. So I thought that was really cute. I don't know if it comes, I think this is just the cube. I think the mouse you have to get separate and do it separately. Um, then I got Just Nan's Tiny Christmas Biscornu because it had cardinals on it. Make into a little ornament. Has the twine and the buttons. And then um, the other pattern I've got from them. Um, this one is called a beauty and a bat, and it's a designs by Lisa. I'd never seen this one before, but I really liked that witch and her little cat. And it says Happy Halloween. It says the little witch. One says, you are so be beautiful to me. And she's looking lovingly into her little cat's face. I thought that was so sweet. Um, so that is it for my haul. Um, so um, that's pretty much it. Other, um, like I said, I'll um, just work on, continue working on my queen sow and then um, try to get her finished up before the next release on December 1st. And then um, I'll get to start my leopard, which I'm excited about because I really love that design. And I think it's going to look really awesome on that fabric. And um, go back to my King Coda and then, then I'll work on my red birds if I get all that done before my next video. So um, now I will... Um, the end of my video here I'll just insert a few pictures of um from our Las Vegas trip maybe a couple from the scenery that we saw um Lake Mead and um on the way home from Vegas we took an extra day and um when we got down by Amarillo Texas we went to Palo Duro Canyon and spent half the day um that was beautiful so I'll insert a couple pictures um just from our trip uh maybe of our race car. Um, there's a picture of the opening ceremony that I'll put in there. There were almost 500 race cars there for the show. And at the very beginning to kick off the uh, race, they had all the cars that were there come out on the track and um, why they sang the national anthem and stuff. And they had fighter jets that flew over um, it was really, really cool. And um, our race car, actually, when you look at the picture, uh, we were in the front row. So we were in the front row on the far, let's see, when you look at it, it would be on towards the in, infield. So we're the very first car on that row. It, it looks white and you can kind of see it has a little bit of a, it has a red design on the hood. So, um, but that's our car in the front um, on closest to the infield. So that was really cool that we were in the front row for that. And I'll insert a couple of pictures of my husband and um, the driver uh, that raced her car, Ray Bollinger, um, out of Illinois. Uh, he, uh, and then I'll put a couple of pictures of my husband and I in from our trip um, when we were at the Canyon. And, um, lastly, I'll put in some video when I was at Stitcher's Paradise. I tried to do some video of the models that were on the walls. Um, again, I don't know if you've ever been to Stitcher's Paradise, but, um, it's kind of smaller inside. And because there's uh, a lot of charts and stuff, it's 
kind of hard to maneuver around so to get really good videos. So um, I was able to get a few few videos. They're probably not the best um, and they're not, but it'll give you an idea of some of the models that they're there. Good, and you? Good. I need to know if you have some red sauce. And the thing that will make you is a carol that you sing right here. Sad things. I mean, all of a sudden, I decided I'm going to. Oh, I got. I 
think I needed some more red uh, beads here. Yeah. I'm running out. I'm making a lot of stuff that has red beads. Yeah, you can go ahead and do that. I've got some stuff. I want to thank everybody for watching my video and subscribing again. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Strictly Stitchy, I hope to hear from you soon so I can get your fabric out to you. So um, until next time, uh, Thanksgiving's in a few days. So if you celebrate Thanksgiving here in the United States, I hope you stay safe, uh, stay healthy, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Um, we're not going to have our family dinner Um because of COVID and, um, my husband and I, since we just traveled and stuff, we to Vegas and, um, we didn't want a chance bringing something home to anybody. So, um, we're not going to have a big family dinner. Um, I have to work pretty much all Thanksgiving anyway. So, um, we'll save it for our Christmas. And, um, but if you're getting together with your family or just having a small gathering at home, um, I hope you enjoy yourself and stay safe, safe and healthy and happy stitching. Until next time, take care all. Bye.